So in this video, we'll be focusing on basic units of measurement. So um, first thing you know now, a measurement is uh, something that was obtained by using a measuring tool. So now what are the units? Unit is very important for a measurement. This makes a measurement, it provides an identification to a measurement. For instance, if I make a measurement of length of an object, I would say, um, the ruler that I'm using, based on the ruler that I'm using, the length of this particular uh, sheet of paper is 10 feet. Okay, what is 10? 10 is my measurement, and feet right here is the unit of measurement. So basically, this measurement that I'm saying is measured in units of feet. So this number 10 is not really giving me any information until I use the correct unit after. Right. So unit basically uh, provides and uh, it's associated to a measurement and it provides meaning to a measurement. OK, so for instance, if I'm uh, measuring distance between uh, two cities, I'm talking about the distance in miles or kilometers. Right. So these units basically are telling me what am I talking about when I say something in miles? That means I'm talking about length or distance. So this basically gives a definition or to our measurement. Now there are multiple units that uh, can be used. For instance, you can see right here, length can be measured in meters. We also know some other units of length, for instance, kilometers, miles, like we just saw, millimeters, centimeters. Those are all units of length. Similarly, when you make measurement of mass, the unit could be in grams, kilograms, pounds is something always is something that we commonly use volume can be in liters milliliters gallon um, cubic meters that is those are some common units that we see time can be measured in seconds minutes hours temperature similarly can be measured in degree celsius or fahrenheit right so all these quantities can have multiple units now multiple units can be very confusing sometimes right so scientists basically came up with different systems. So the first system that is used all over the world is called the metric system. So this right here, you're seeing the metric system. The base unit that is used in the metric system for length is usually meters. Mass is grams. Volume is usually um, measured and uh, noted down in liters. Tem time in seconds, temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay. The other system that is very officially uh, official system that is commonly used throughout the world except US is called the in uh, is the international system of units and is also abbreviated as SI system based on the name system international so this is the SI system that is very commonly used throughout the world for instance length throughout the world is usually measured in meters mass is measured in kilograms volume is measured in cubic meters time in seconds and temperature in Kelvin. Kelvin, something might be a new unit for some of you guys, so we'll talk about those in a little bit. Okay, here are the some standard units that are used in metric system, like I just told you. And moving on uh, to the SI system. The SI system consists of multiple units, and you'll see those later on. All these units that are present in SI system are related to each other by a power of 10. How each these each of these units is basically related to the other unit by a power of 10. That means 10 raised to the power something that power is called the exponent. Okay. And what is this exponent depends on the prefix of that unit. For instance, when I talk about meters, meters is related to millimeters. Okay. So the unit between millimeters and meters is related by a exponent that is raised to the power of 10. And you'll see that now based on this. So here are some very common prefixes that are used in the SI system. So for instance, some of the prefixes are mega, kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro, and nano. These prefixes can be used with any base unit. For instance, the base unit for distance or length we saw was meters. So I can, when I'm talking about meters, I can talk about meters in meters, or which is the base unit. 
or I can talk about meters in length in kilometers or megameters or decimeters, centimeters, right? So these symbols that you're seeing, these are referring to each prefix. So mega is capital M, kilo is small k, centi is small c, millimeters is small m, micrometers is written as this particular symbol, mu. This is called as micrometers, nanometers. So these are basically different prefixes that can be put in front of a base unit. And base unit, we just saw what the base units are. They can be meters for mass, it is grams. Uh, so these are basically your base units for length, for mass. Uh, and we can put any of these prefixes in front of these base units. So if I'm talking about now weight, I could be measuring my weight in grams or in kilograms, kilo being this uh, prefix, it could be in centigrams, milligrams, right? These are some very commonly used uh, units for mass. Now, how can you figure out what is the relationship between these different uh, units in the SI system? This is given to you right here. So that basically means that when we talk about one mega meter, let's say if I'm picking my base unit as meters, I'm talking about length right now, okay? So when I say one mega meter, mega meter can be written as meter is my base unit and mega is the abbreviation is capital M. So that becomes mega meter. One mega meter is equal to base unit times 10 raised to power six. So one mega meter will be equal to 10 raised to power 6 times the base unit, which is meter. So meter is my base unit right here. So you basically should try to kind of memorize this part and these parts. Okay, so this is telling you the prefix and the symbol, and this is telling you the relationship. So now if I talk about the relationship between kilo mm -hmm. meters, let's say again, I'm talking about length here. So what is one kilometer equal to one kilometer will be equal to base unit times 10 raised to power three so it would be 10 raised to power three meters so that is my relationship between kilometers and meters okay and this relationship that you're seeing right here is called also called as conversion factor and so conversion factor what that means is essentially this is the factor that will help you convert between these units. So let's say if you're going from kilometers to meters, if you want to convert your number from kilometers to meter, you need this factor. You should know this factor. Okay? This is something that I expect you guys to memorize. Let's pick another example. Let's say if I'm talking about millimeters. So in millimeters, one milli can be written as small m based on the symbol millimeter would be again millimeters would be equal to what it would be equal to 10 raised to power negative 3 times the base unit it will be equal to 10 raised to power negative 3 times the base unit which is meter so this is the relationship between millimeters and meters similarly i could have my base unit as grams right instead of length let's say i'm measuring mass so my base unit for that would be grams so now if i want to figure out a relationship between kilograms and grams my relationship would be one kilogram so whatever your prefix is remember that take that as one so one kilogram will be equal to 10 raised to power 3 times base unit so it would be 10 raised to power 3 times the base unit which is grams how can you know what is the base unit whatever is next to the prefix that is your base unit Similarly, if I want to figure out what is the conversion factor between, let's say, nanograms and grams, how can we figure that out? One nanogram, because this is my uh, prefix, one nanogram is equal to base unit times 10 raised to power minus 9. 10 raised to power minus 9 times the base unit, which is grams. So this is my conversion factor. So you can basically try to memorize these relationships, and we will be using them as conversion factors. Okay, this can be used to basically convert from one unit to the other standard unit in the SI system. So I just explained to you how these relationships are related. Now, sometimes it can get very confusing. Uh, 
So based on the last table that I've showed you, you could write this relationship, which is one kilogram is 10 raised to power three grams or thousand grams. This what you see, the exponent. I should explain you just again one more time what exponent means. So 10 raised to power three means it has three zeros. So one, two, three. If the exponent is positive, that means it's a very big number. Remember? So that would be one, two, three. If the number is like this, the exponent is 10 raised to power minus one, that means it is negative exponent means it is one over 10. If the exponent is 10 raised to power negative three, that means it is one over one, two, three. So 1000. So this three exponent basically is in division. Negative means it's in division. Okay. Now, sometimes it can get confusing where if you you could write that one centimeter is equal to uh, 0 0.01 meters or 10 raised to power minus two meters, whatever works for you. Okay. Or you might also find this conversion factor, which is one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Okay. So try to memorize just one of these um, and that would be more helpful for you guys. Okay. So just use the approach that I showed you where you keep your prefixes as one and then the base unit would be anything 10 raised to power an exponent. Okay. So try to remember it that way. Uh, it will not be very confusing in, in that way. Okay. All right. So now uh, let's try to use these conversion factors. Okay. Before we move on to the conversion factors, actually, I do want to mention along with the units that you just saw, saw the standard units, sometimes there are also some derived units. Derived units are basically something like this. For instance, if I talk about volume of an object, okay, so volume of a cube, how would you measure the volume of a cube? A volume of cube is given by basically length times height times breadth, right? So what is the unit for length? Length would be meters. Let's say I'm talking in meters. What would be the height? Again, it's also a measurement of length meters. Breadth, again, a measurement in meters. So meters times meters times meters can be written as cubic meters. Just how we can add and subtract uh, numbers or multiply and divide numbers. You can do the same thing with units. Okay, so if you have three meter times meter times meter, it can be written as cubic meter. So this is basically regarded as a derived unit because it is one of the derivations of length. Okay, so this is a very commonly used unit for volume. Uh, the other units that can be used for volume can be, again, any derivation of meters. So meters length can be written as centimeters. So volume would be cubic centimeters. It could be cubic kilometers. It could be in liters, it could be in milliliters. So if liter is one, what would be the relationship between liter and milliliter? Again, you start with the base unit, uh, your prefixes unit, which is ML, right? So milli is what? Milli is your base unit times 10 raised to power negative three. So that would be your conversion factor. How do I know that? I know because I memorized it. Milli is 10 raised to power negative three of the actual base unit. Some other uh, units uh, that are commonly used, one other relationship that you should memorize is that one ml is equal to one cubic centimeter. So if you want, you can basically go from the unit of length to the unit of volume using this. One ml is one cubic centimeter. Okay. Some other units that are commonly used, for instance, for length, you could see kilometers, meters, mile, inches, yards, centimeters, uh, foot or feet. So this is basically showing you the relationship or the conversion factor between different units of length. Again, I don't expect you to memorize any of these. I only expect you to memorize the prefix units that I showed you before. Okay. If a question comes from this, the conversion factor would always be provided to you in question. Moving on, some other common units of masses could be kilograms. Sorry, this is wrong. It should be kilograms, not meters. Two pounds, 
pounds or grams or ounces and grams. So these are basically different conversion factors that can help you convert between different units. It can help you go from kilograms to pounds or pounds to grams or oz to grams. Similarly with volume, uh, you could go from liters, milliliters, cubic meters, quarts, gallon, that is commonly used in US. So there are multiple units and their conversion factors. Okay, now moving on, um, uh, for units, you should know that you should always write every number with its associated unit. That's where it comes very important with these. In chemistry, if your number is supposed to have a unit, make sure you're giving the unit as with your final number. Okay? And my suggestion to you from now on until the end of this uh, course and actually including everything else, whatever you do, if you're doing any kind of chemistry, uh, it would be very helpful or I should say you should always, always include units in your calculations, okay? So basically, whatever calculations you do with the uh, numbers, you can do the exact same thing with units. For instance, if you're multiplying centimeter by centimeter, it would become centimeter squared. If you're doing centimeter times centimeter times centimeters, that would be cubic centimeters. If you're doing this, centimeter divided by centimeter, so centimeter divided by centimeter would be one. So centimeter and centimeter would get canceled out, right? Just how you do two divided by two is what? Two divided by two is one. They cancel out. Similarly, units also cancel out. The difference is when you're doing addition and subtraction. If you add centimeter and centimeter, your final answer would be centimeters. If you do the same thing with subtraction, if you subtract centimeter from centimeter, your final answer would be centimeter. What that means is if, let's say, you have a measurement of 10 centimeters and you cut out 4 centimeters out of it, your final answer would be 6 centimeters. Okay? So if you have 10 centimeters and you add 4 centimeters into it, your final answer would be 14 centimeters. So when you're adding and subtracting, whatever is the unit of each number becomes your unit of the final answer. When you were, whenever you're multiplying or dividing, just follow the rules of whatever you did with the number. Same happens to the units. Okay, and this is basically this approach is called an approach of dimensional analysis. Okay, this will become very handy when you're doing questions. Okay, so make sure you're working with the units. Your units, if your unit final units comes out to correct, means you are doing the right math. Okay, and you'll see how we can use this later on. Whenever a problem is given to you, most of the problems essentially you'll see is when you're given one unit of measurement and the question is asking you to convert it into different unit. For instance, kilometer is given to you uh, and the question is asking convert it into centimeters or meters. How can you do that? Okay. In order to do that, use dimensional analysis. Okay. How would we do that? The simple rule is, and it's also written in words, in your slide so you can go through the words in the slide but basically what you do is you always begin with a starting unit that's given to you in question okay so you start with the starting unit and then you multiply it by your conversion factor so this would be your conversion factor okay or let me rewrite that portion oops a conversion factor basically would be the relationship between the two units. So this is your starting unit. You will divide it by the starting unit from your conversion factor and multiply it by the final answer unit. Final unit that you want your answer in. So what would happen? Starting unit and starting unit would cancel out. Your final answer would be in your final unit that you are interested in. Okay. For instance, let's pick an example. Okay. So whenever you're doing a question of dimensional analysis, meaning you're going from one, uh, uh, what's given to you in question, to of trying to solve it to find the final answer, you should always make a solution map. Okay. What is a solution map? It's basically just an outline of or a plan that you're going to uh, design to help you make a final route. What is the strategic route that you're going to take to solve a problem? Okay, so 
you basically write down what's given to you in question and then write down what is uh, the question asking and see how you can go from what's given to what's the question asked. Okay, so it basically follows a very systemic approach and we'll go through these steps. I'll come back to these steps in a little bit again, but let's try to understand this with a question, with an example, okay? So if this is the question, convert five inches into centimeters and the conversion factor to go or the relationship between inches and centimeters is given to you. The question is telling you one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters and we have to convert five inches into centimeters so how many centimeters are present in five inches okay how would we do that first thing we are going to do is we are going to create our solution map which is essentially what's given to you in question so question has given me five inches okay and it's asking me to convert this into centimeters so this is what's given to me now my plan solution map essentially means what is your plan to do this to solve this question now to go from one unit to the other unit you always need a conversion factor which is basically the relationship between the two units in here you don't have to memorize this because this is given to you in question what is the conversion factor here conversion factor is one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters so this is your conversion factor whatever is the conversion factor you basically write down between those steps and now this is your solution map this is telling you that to go from five inches to centimeters you need this as your conversion factor now what we are going to do is we will follow these steps to do our conversion you always follow the map that you just made so we start with the first step in our map which is five inches so you start with what's given to you in question now I need to use this conversion factor to cancel the unit which is inches and convert it into centimeters. So I'm going to use this conversion factor as a fraction. I'll convert this into a fraction. Okay. Now this conversion factor can be written in two ways as a fraction. It could be one inch divided by 2.4554 centimeters or we can also write this as 2.54 centimeters divided by one inch. Now, which out of these two should I use? How, you, how do you decide that? You would decide that based on what's given to you. What is given to me? Inches. Inches in my is in my numerator. Now, what do I want to do? I want to get rid of inches, right? And I convert it into centimeters. So to get rid of the numerator, you will have to divide this by denominator uh, as inches, right? So what would I do? I need inches at the bottom as a denominator to cancel these two out and where would i what would i do which one is in inches this right here so that means the inches in denominator is in this conversion factor so i divide it by inches and multiply it by centimeters or what you can think of this other way is that i want to cancel the inches so i divide by inches and i multiply by the other unit that is present in my conversion factor that I wrote in my solution map, which is centimeters. So I multiply it by centimeters. Now you can simply plug this into as it is. Inches was how many? One. Sorry. Oh. Inches was one. So I write one right here. And centimeters is 2.54. So you, I'm just basically picking up the numbers now. I wrote down the units first, and then I'm going by the numbers based on my conversion factor. Now, let's cancel the units first, inches and inches. Inches divided by inches, right? So they got canceled out, just how numbers get canceled out. And now, no unit, no unit multiplied by centimeter. So your final answer is now going to be in. This will be equal to centimeters. Now you can just plug this value into your calculator and you can basically solve for the final answer. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, five, oh, that would give you five multiplied by 2.54 will give you 12.7 centimeters. This is your answer when you multiply the numbers, but this is not your final answer. For final answer, you always have to think about significant figures. 
So now, uh, if you remember from the previous video, we are going to go by number of six six of each number that was involved in here. The first number that was involved here is five and six. This is given to us in question. This is our measured value. So how many six six are present in five? One six six. How many six six are present in this particular conversion factor? This is a exact number. Okay, we did not measure it. This is something that is already measured. This is something that is already known. So all the conversion factors that you see, they are not regarded as you never uh, consider the number of six six in those numbers. Those are always regarded as exact numbers. Okay, always remember that. This has no value to us. Uh, with when it comes to number of six figs. We do not count the number of six figs in a conversion factor. That is an exact number, okay? not a measurement. So in this case, this has no, we don't count the number of six figs here, we count only one six fig here, which means that my final answer should have one significant figure. So I'll have to round this number up or down to convert it into one significant figure. One means it has to end right here. Now I cannot simply convert 12 into one. I will have to, change this number. What is the following digit? The following digit is 2, which means I cannot round this number up. I'll have to round this number down to 10. So my final answer will be 10 centimeters. All right, so that is how you do your conversion. Now let's go back to the rules that were written in words. Now you have seen the example. Let's see what the rules were telling us. So the systemic approach told us, first step is write down the given amount and unit, which we did, which was inches for us, five inches. Then you write down what you want to find and the unit. I want to find out centimeters. Then the next step is you write down the needed conversion factor or the equation. Write down the equivalent statement for each relationship. Change the equivalent statement to conversion factor with the starting unit on the bottom. So the equivalent statement basically means the relationship between the two units. Convert it into conversion factor means convert it into a fraction where the starting unit should be at the bottom. Now design a solution map for the problem, meaning order the conversions to cancel the previous unit or arrange the equation so the find amount is isolated. And the next step is apply the steps in solution map. So when you have your solution map, just apply the steps. Check that the units cancel properly. First, cancel the units. Then you work with numbers. Then multiply and divide the terms across the top and divide by each bottom term. Sorry, multiply the terms across the top and then divide by the each number at the bottom term. And finally, determine the number of sig figs that should be present uh, in your final answer to report and if needed you round it up or you round it down. Lastly, you check the answer to see if it is a reasonable answer, if it has the correct number or the correct unit. And let's try one more example based on this. So let's say if we are doing this particular question. Convert, oh, the question is convert 7.8 kilometers to miles. The conversion factor between kilometers and miles is given to us. So what is my question asking me to do? It is asking me to go from kilometers to miles. Okay. So this is my solution map. Let's first make our solution map. First thing, uh, I need to go from kilometers to miles. Do I have a conversion factor that directly relates kilometers Two miles, yes, this is the conversion factor. It's telling me that one kilometer is equal to 0 0.6214 miles, okay? So this is my conversion factor. Now I'm going to use this conversion factor to go from kilometers to miles. So you first start with what's given to you in question, which is 7.8 kilometers. This is my starting unit, right? Now I want to multiply it by my conversion factor, which means I have to convert this into a fraction. How? By, I want to cancel the kilometer, so I will divide it by the same 
unit as a starting unit and multiply it by the other unit that is present here. So miles will come on top, kilometers will be at the bottom. The number that is following, now you just plug in those numbers. Kilometers was how much? 1. Miles is how much? 0 0.6214 miles. Okay. So this was my solution map. Now I'm just following my solution map. Now the next step is first, let's cancel. Work with units. Kilometers, kilometers got canceled. My unit final answer is miles. So this would be equal to when I first write the units, which is miles or mi, next I work with numbers. So my numbers are 7.8 times 0 0.6214, plug this into your calculator, divided by 1, and that would give you your number. The calculator would give you 4.84692. Okay. Now this is what the calculator gives you. Now we are going to look for the number of sig figs. So again, how do we count the number of six figs? We count the number of six figs in the number that is given to us, the measurement, which is 7.8. This has two six figs. How many six figs does this conversion factor have? We do not care. This is an exact number. So I'm not going to count how many six figs are present here. So the number of six figs I want in my final answer is two, which is one, two. So my answer should stop right here. The following digit after 8 is 4, which is smaller than 5, which means I do not have to round my number up. It would be 4.8 miles, and that would be my final answer. Conversion factor is given to us between kilometers and miles. So how would we do this question? The question, first write down what is given to you. The question is telling me that we have 7.8 kilometers. This is a measurement. How it was taken, what is it, we don't care. This is 7.8 kilometers. The question is saying convert this into miles. So first thing, write down what is given to you. Okay, and then write down what is the question asking. Is this a direct conversion? Do we have a direct relationship between the two units given to us? Yes. Either it's given to you in question or you're expected to remember. Okay? So for instance, in this case, the direct relationship between kilometers and miles is given to us. So that is your conversion factor for this particular conversion. So you can rewrite that right here. One kilometer is 0 0.6214 miles. Okay? And this is this what we just drew here is called our solution map. Okay? This is very important. It doesn't look very appealing to do this right now but it would in future when the question becomes more complicated and more difficult okay so right here you have a direct relationship to go from one unit to the other now how do you solve the question like this always write down what is given to you in question okay? the starting value whatever is given to you in question first write that down that is 7.8 kilometers okay now we are going to either multiply this or divide this by this particular conversion factor in a way to get to miles. So current unit that I've given to you is kilometers, right here. Okay? I want to cancel the kilometers. I want to get rid of kilometers, right? So what do I do? I will look at my conversion factor. These are the two units given to me. I want to get rid of this kilometer. So I will divide it by the kilometer in the conversion factor. Okay? So now what will happen, this kilometer right here and kilometer right here can get cancelled out, right? Because it's in division. What is the other unit in this conversion factor? Miles. So I multiply by miles. And what are the units? What, how many kilometers? Just plug in the numbers. Once you have plugged in your units, plug in your numbers. Now it is one kilometer, so one goes right here. And miles is 0 0.6, so that comes right here. 0 0.6214 miles. Now you can just the unit. Okay. So remember just how we cancel the units. Cancel the numbers, you cancel the units. So kilometer divided by kilometer will be cancelled out. The final answer in units that is left is miles. So that's what it means to work with dimensional analysis. You are basically working with units. You don't know if you should divide 7.8 by 0.6214 or you should multiply it by 0.6214. 
for this that would give you a number 4.8 um oops 4.84692 that is what the calculator gives you now again remember this is not your final answer your final answer should be right with the number of sig figs now what did we learn about sig figs the sig figs are given to us in question in 7.8 kilometers this is a number which is a measured value this right here, the conversion factor that we are using, it's an exact number, right? This is based on a fact. This is not a measurement. So we do not care about what are the number of sig figs in this particular conversion factor. Only number of sig figs we care about is in kilometers. So let's figure out how many sig figs do we have here. This is one and two, both are non-zero. So this has two sig figs. How many sig figs do we want in a final answer? We don't care about the this right here, the number of sig figs here, we do not care. So the answer should have two sig figs, which means one and two. The next following digit is four, which is less than five. So our final answer would be 4.8 miles. That's it. Okay. Let's try another question. So in this question, it says convert 30 grams to ounces and the conversion factor is given to us in question between ounces and grams. Okay. So always make a solution map. What is given to us? The question is giving us we have 30.0 grams. Oops, 30.0 grams and it's asking us to go to ounces. So I have grams. I need to go to ounces. Do I have a direct relationship between the two units? Yes. It is one ounce is 28.32 grams. So this would be my conversion factor to go between these two units and that would be my solution map. So we start with what's given to us in question. The question is giving us 30.0 grams. So I start with what's given 30.0 grams. Do not forget to include the units here. Now I want to use my conversion factor in order either divided by ounces or divided by grams. What should I do? I want to get rid of the grams in my starting unit, right? So I will divide it by grams and multiply it by the other side of the conversion factor, which is ounces. Now, don't think about what where the numbers go. Ounces was one, so it's one. Grams are 28.32, so 28.32. Grams and grams would cancel. Our final answer based on units is in ounces, which means we are so now if you plug this value into your calculator, that would give you something like 1.0582 something something. Okay. How many sig figs do we want in a final answer? 30.0 has how many sig figs? This has 3 is a significant figure. The following 0 is sig significant and this 0 is also significant because there is a decimal. The zeros on the right are significant as long as there is a decimal so this would have three sig figs how about this this is an exact number given to us so we do not care about sig figs here so the final number of sig figs i want is three so i have one two three so my final answer should end right here at three sig figs what's the next following digit it is eight which is greater than five so my final answer would be 1.0 i'll have to round this number up it would be 1.0 six ounces make sure you give your final answer with the final units if you do not plug in the units it's not correct and you will not get points for the answer okay so make sure you always put the final unit in your answer and that's it you could use any conversion factor to go from one unit to the other unit as long as you know the conversion factor you can just convert between different units
Okay, let's try one more question. So in this question, the question is how many cups of cream is 0.75 liter? So what's given to me is I have 0.75 liters of something, right, of cream. The question is asking, can you go from liters to cups? So do I have a conversion factor that relates this? I have one liter to quarts, and then I have quarts, UT is quarts. And then I have a conversion factor between quarts and cups. So I don't have a direct conversion factor. Okay. You always have to think what is given to you in question and what is asked. And do you have a direct relationship to go between them? If not, that means you have to use steps in between. So here you can see what's given to me is meters. And the question is asking me to go to cups. Do I have a direct relationship? I do. But what do I have? I have cups related to quarts and quarts related to meters. So I have an in-between factor which is common to both these conversion factors. So I can use that. I can go from meters to quarts and then from quarts I can go to cups. So I have a solution map right here to go from meters to quarts and then quarts to cups. The conversion factor that I can use here is between meter and quarts is given to me. One meter is 1.057 quarts. And here, between quarts and cups is one quart is four cups. Okay, so now how do we actually use this solution map to get to our answer? The rule are still the same. You start with what's given to you, which is 0 0.75 liter. So I write down what's given to you, which is 0 0.75 liters. Right? I want to get rid of liter. What is my first conversion factor? Do not overstep here, okay? Do not go ahead. You can only do one conversion at a time. I want to get rid of meters, so I divide it by meters. Right here, multiply by the other side, which is QT. One meter is 1.057. I always need less space for myself. So let me rewrite this. It's 1.057 points. Now, or liter and liters of cancer. What is the unit that's left? Quartz. I don't want my final answer in quartz. I have to go from quartz to cups now. So I get rid of quartz, so I multiply it by the conversion factor, which is right here. And how do I use it? I want to get rid of quartz, so I divide by quartz, multiply by the other side of conversion factor, which is cups, so cups right here. Now plug in the numbers. Quartz is one, so I put one here. Cups is four, so I put Four in front of cups. Now again, cancel the units first and see if you are getting your final answer in right units. Quartz and quartz got cancelled. My final answer is in cups, which means I'm probably doing this correct. So now you plug in these numbers into your calculator, and the number that I got from my calculation is three point one seven one something cups okay now what is the right number of circuits that i want in the final answer let's see this is the number that was given to me this is the measure value how many circuits does this have zero on the left of the number are non-significant so none of these is significant only the figures seven and five which means this has two circuits right how about this conversion factor Again, yeah, conversion factors are exact numbers. Both of these, either of these, are not significant. So the final answer should have two sigfigs, just multiplication. So two sigfigs, which means this and this, right here. So it has to end right here. What's the following day? It is seven. So if it is greater than five, it will become 3.3 cups. And that is your final answer for this question. So if a direct conversion factor is given to you to go from the value in question to the final answer, you use that. If it's not given to you directly, see if there is an indirect relationship between the two units. Okay, and then use, just cancel the units out. I 
as long as you're working with the units, you do not have to worry about numbers. Okay, so what's important here is that you should be able to make a solution now because that would give you an idea of what is your plan of action for solving this question. Okay. So we can try a couple more questions here. So the next question is convert 30 ml to quartz. And the conversion factors are giving you from ml to liters and from liters to quartz. Okay. So again, we write down what is given to us, which is 30.0 ml. And the person wants us to convert this into. Oops. And here I can convert it into quartz. So Let's make our solution map. In solution map, you just put your units. I have ML. I need to go from ML to finally what? Do I have a direct relationship that I'm aware of? I do. But I can go from ML to liters and then liters to quart. So in between, we have one step that we need to complete, which is to go to liters. So the conversion factor for ML to liters is that one ML is 0 0.001 liter. You could use any either this one or you could use one liter in 1000 ml. It would not make a difference because we are working with units and not with numbers. Okay, that's why it's very important that you work with units and not with numbers. And the conversion factor that we use liters and quartz is given to in question. One liter is 1.057 quartz. Okay. So I will give you the evidence that why it doesn't matter which unit you use, which conversion factor you use. Okay? So let's start with the first one, which is 30 ml. Okay? So 30.0 ml, I want to get rid of ml, so I will divide by ml and multiply it by the other conversion factor, which is meter. So I put meters there. One ml is 0 0.001 meters. ML and ml will cancel, my final answer is meters. Now I need to go from meters to quartz, so I will cancel the few meters, I do my meters, multiply by quartz. How many meters? It's one meter right here from the conversion factor, so one right here. Quartz is 1.057, so 1.057. Meters and meters can cancel. Our final answer is in quartz. If you solve this and plug this into your calculator, that will give you 0 0.0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 Quartz. Okay. Now, how many sig figs do we want? Remember this: the value, measurement value, or the measured value that is given to you in question is this, which has how many sig figs? This is significant, and all the zeros on the right are significant because there is a decimal, which means this has three sig figs. Sig figs for this conversion factor doesn't matter. Sig figs for this doesn't matter because they are exact. Finally, I want three sig figs in my final answer. All these zeros on the left of a number are not significant. So sig fig is one, two, three, which means my final answer would be 0 0.0317 quartz. Okay. Now, I told you that it doesn't matter what conversion factor you use, right? So let's work with the other conversion factor. So let's say if I'm going, instead of using this as my conversion factor, I'm using one Liter is 1000 ml. Okay? And we should redo this question. So we start with what's given to us, which is 30.0 ml. I want to get rid of ml, so I divide by ml, multiply by the other side of the conversion, which is liters. So what is the value? Liters is 1 and ml is 1000. Yes, okay? so as long as you plug in the units correctly, your numbers will not make a difference. So ML and ML got cancelled, my answer is in meters. Now I am going to cancel liters, so I divide by liter, multiply by what? 1 liter is 1.057 quarts, liter, liter got cancelled, the final answer is again 0 0.0317 quarts. Okay, so it does not matter what numbers you're using as long as you're using the right conversion factor. Okay, and you're working with units because if you're Setting up your question 
or your solution in terms of unit, your numbers will always come out to be correct. Okay, so again, there are multiple questions in the worksheet that you could use and practice questions like this. Everything is based on the same uh, principle. You write down the starting unit that's given to you and use the conversion factors essentially to cancel the units and go to the units that you finally desire. Okay, let's keep going. Let's do this question. So the question says, an automobile engine displaces a volume of 498 centimeter cubes or cubic centimeters in each cylinder. What is the displacement of cylinder in cubic inches? And the conversion factor is given to you to go between inches and centimeters. Okay. So first, let's write down what's given to us. The question is telling us we have 498 cubic inches. Don't forget the units. And, oh, sorry, not inches. My bad. The question is giving us cubic centimeters. And it's asking us to convert it into cubic inches. Okay. So do I have a conversion factor that directly relates this relationship? I don't have cubic, but I do have inches and centimeters. Okay, so now we begin with what's given to us again, which is 498 cubic centimeters. So I want to cancel this centimeter, right? Cubic means I have three times centimeters, right? So I want to cancel one centimeter at a time. Let's cancel one at a time. So if I want to cancel centimeter, I divide my centimeter. And the other side is inch. So I multiply by inch. Now just plug in the number. Inch is worth one. So one centimeter is 2.54. So 2.54. One centimeter and one centimeter will just cancel. If I would be left with square centimeter, right? Now I want to get rid of another centimeter. So I do this again. Divide by centimeter, multiply by inch, same conversion factor. I got rid of one more centimeter. Now I'm left with one more. So I do this again. Centimeter, inch, one centimeter, 2.54, oh, one inch, 2.54 centimeters. So centimeter and five more centimeter got cancelled. My answer is an inch times inch times inch, which is cubic inch. And your final answer will be. 30.4 cubic inches. If you plug this in, it will give you multiple, a very big answer. We are looking for three sig figs. Why? Because of 498 centimeters. So three sig figs from here. This and this and this, we don't care about sig figs. Okay. So the final answer is 30.4 cubic inches. So if the unit has cubes or centimeters or uh, something, a unit in it, just remember, you want to cancel every single unit of that. Okay, if there is an exponent, you have to cancel every single exponent one at a time. So if I want to cancel cubic centimeters, I multiply by, divide by centimeter three times. And use the same conversion factor three times. Okay. All right. So there's one more question for you guys that you need to practice on your own. Give it a try. If you don't understand, please feel free to email. Okay. All right. Uh, next, we'll talk about uh, displacement, volume by displacement. What is this? This is one of the techniques that is used in labs in experiments. If you have a solid object and it's irregular shape, and we don't know what is the volume of that, how can you measure it? You could measure it by displacing some liquid. This is called volume measurement by displacement. What does that mean? Basically, this is based on Archimedes principle, which states that every solid is going to displace some liquid, right? So let's say if I fill up, this is called a graduated cylinder. I take a graduated cylinder and I fill this up partially. Okay, and let's say I fill it up to the 50 ml mark. Now I take that irregular object and drop it into this. What would happen? The volume of the liquid in the cylinder would rise. It, it rose to 60.5 ml. So 
Initially, it was 50, after I added this object, it became 60.5, which means the values in the volume that we see is from the object that was dropped into the cylinder. So, this difference in the volume that we see, which is 60.5 minus 50, which will give you 10.5 ml, is the actual volume of the object. So, that is how we can measure the volume of an irregular shaped object. Similarly, if we have something gas, how can we measure the volume? Same approach. So let's say if this is a reaction which is producing some gas, I want to figure out what is the volume of gas that is produced in this reaction. What can we do? We can connect this gas reaction, gas producing reaction, to, to one of the um, beakers, which is also connected to some another beaker via these capillary tubes. So what would happen if some gas is being produced, let's say this cylinder is this beaker that we run bottom class that we see in the middle is completely closed. If we produce, if any gas is produced, that gas is going to take up because there is a connection between this test tube and the volumetric class, it will enter the volumetric class and whatever excess volume is of the gas is entering, the same amount of water will actually displace out of this particular RV because it can only hold a certain amount of volume, right? There is some gas that is similar to it. Both occupy volume. So that would displace some liquid out into a, another beaker. And whatever liquid that comes out or an increase in the volume of the liquid that is seen is coming from the amount of gas that is being produced or the volume of new gas that is being produced. So this is volume by measurement. You could more measure the volume of the gas or it is regularly shaped solid here. So there is another question. You guys can practice uh, these questions from the slide. Let's try this question. This is a little bit uh, different. <laughs> okay, so the question says, a motorcycle is traveling at one or five kilometers per hour. What is the speed in meters per second? So let's find out what's given to us in question. The question says one or five kilometers per hour. And it wants us to convert this into meters per second. So you can see here this particular uh, number that's given to you in as two units. It is kilometers and hours kilometer per hour. Yeah. When you see divided, that means per so these many kilometers per hour, so there are two units. And it wants to convert these two units into two other units. Kilometer is going converted into meters and hour is getting converted into seconds. So first thing you should identify here is which unit is getting converted into what. Yeah. So you should know the basis of units. For instance, kilometers is used to make a lump and same is kilometer. So this these two units are related to each other. Hour is used to measure time and same is seconds. So these are the two other units that are related to each other. So do we know a conversion factor that goes from kilometers to meters? Yes. This is something you have to memorize. This is one kilometer is one thousand meters. Same thing with time. Do we have conversion factor between hour and seconds? I don't remember the direct one, but I do remember something that I can use, which is one hour is 60 minutes and one minute i need two conversion factors here one minute is 60 seconds so i can go from hour to minute and then from minute to seconds okay so that would be our solution now here so we start with what's given which is one of five kilometers per hour means divided by hour now let's work with one unit at a time okay let's first convert kilometers to meters so to do that, I need to divide by kilometers to cancel it, multiply by meters. The number is by one kilometer is one thousand meters. So kilometer and kilometer is cancelled. My one of the units is in meters. Now my answer is meter per hour. So let's convert hours into seconds. So I want to cancel this hour. The hour is in denominator. So to cancel that, I will going to multiply it by hour. Right? I need an hour in numerator to cancel this denominator. What is the conversion? First conversion factor I need. I need to get from hour to 
full minute. So the second side would be minute. How many hours? One hour. How many minutes? 60 minutes. So hour and hour will cancel. My answer is in meter per minute. Meter is okay, but I don't want minutes. I want seconds. So again, I'm going to cancel minute. Minute is denominator. So I multiply the minute and divide by the other side, which is seconds. Plug in the number, one minute is 60 seconds. A minute, and then for example, you can see here your final answer is in meter per second. Okay. If you plug this into your calculator, it would give you 29.16666 something. <clears throat> now the question is how many? And six weeks do we want in our final answer? So again, we go with the question. The question gives me 105 kilometers, which is 1, 2, 3. So this has to be 6, 6. This is an exact number. I don't care if this is exact. This is exact. I don't care. So I want 3, 6, 6, which means 1, 2, 3. What's the following digit? 6, which is greater than 5. So my final answer would be 29.2 meters per second. So that would be your final answer in this case. Again, always work with units. Oh, my bad, did I put 29.1 in the previous one? I was rounding it up because it, six was greater than uh, five, so you round it up, 26.3, my bad. Hmm. Now moving on to the next idea. What is density? Okay, so which one, a very common puzzle question, right? Or a prank question, more we'll say. Which one is heavier? Is one kg metal object that you see in this picture heavy or one kg cotton that you see in this picture heavier? Which one of these is heavier? The answer is both of them are same. Both of them weigh same. Why? Both are one kgs. But why do they look so different? Why one has such small volume and the other one has such high volume? That is because of their density, which is an intrinsic property. Intrinsic means that that property depends on what the molecule is, the composition of the molecule. It does not depend on any other factors. This does not change if I change outside factors. This is something that's inbuilt in the material. So if I pick a bulk of one kg of iron, it will occupy a lot smaller volume than one kg of water. Okay, because Iron has much higher density than cotton. Okay, that is density. By definition, density is mass over volume. So it is the ratio of mass to the ratio of its volume. So mass that is occupied by an object divided by the volume occupied by the object. So mass of the object can have multiple units. You could have mass in grams, kilograms. Right, grams, kilograms, uh, nanograms, milligrams, whatever you want. And similarly, volume can have multiple units as well. It could be ml, it could be liters, it could be uh, millimeters, depending on whatever units we are working with. So, what's important for you here is that density can be used as a conversion factor. Okay. So let's say if I give you a question where I ask you calculate density of an object. Mass is given to you and volume is given to you. That is very simple. You have to remember density is mass over volume. So if you are given the mass, you plug in the mass into this formula. Same, similarly, you plug in the volume in this formula and you get density. But if the question gives you density of an object and it's asking you, can you figure out volume of this object if the density is so and so and if mass is so and so? How do we solve a question like that? In question like that, if density is given to you in question, you always use that as a conversion factor. Okay? For instance, if the density is given as gram per cubic centimeters, we will use this as a conversion factor to go from grams to cubic centimeters. So this is a conversion factor that relates mass to volume directly. If it's liquid, usually the density is in grams per ml because liquids have volume measurement in ml. So 
it is a conversion factor to relate directly grams and ml of that object okay so density is always specific to an object for instance water has a density of one uh, gram per ml so one gram of water will always occupy a volume of one ml right similarly density of solids is always greater than liquids which is always greater than gases and ice is an exception to that okay? but we'll talk about more about this uh, later on in the chapters for now we'll just work with units okay for instance let's try this very simple question the question is what is the density of platinum nugget that has a mass of 224.50 gram and a volume of 10.0 cubic centimeters. So the question is, what is density? Oh. So first write down what's given to you in the question. Question is, what is density? What's given to us is mass, which is 224.50 grams and volume, which is 10.0 cubic centimeters. The question is, what is density? Do I know what is density? Density is mass over volume. So what do I need for this formula? I need to figure out what is mass. Is that given to me in question? Yes. Second thing I need is volume. Is that given to me in question? Yes. So this question is really simple. You plug in the values into the formula. That's it. So density will be mass, which is 224.50 grams, divided by volume, which is 10.0 cubic centimeters. If you solve for this question, that would give you 22.45 centimeter gram, sorry, don't forget the units, gram per cubic centimeters. Now, what is the sig fix that we want? We want, this is a division question. So the top one has how many sig figs? One, two, three, four, five. Zeros on the right, will be all counted as long as there is decimal. So this is five sig figs. This is one, two, three. Again, zeros will be all counted because there is decimal. So this is three sig figs. So my answer should end right here, which is 22 point. The next digit is five, which is greater than five. So it would be rounded up. So 22.5 gram per cubic centimeters. So that is your final answer for density. So the questions can be framed in multiple ways. The only important thing is that if the question is asking for density, you somehow figure out what is the mass and somehow figure out what is the volume and plug those values in, right? There are multiple questions in here that you could practice. I'm going to skip them for now for this uh, video to not make it too long and keep on going okay now the other kind of question that you can get is where you might have to use density as a conversion factor and how do you decide when to do that whenever question gives you density okay when density of a compound or metal or anything is given to you in question you use that as a conversion factor what do i mean by that for instance right here if the question tells you density of water is one gram per ml, what does that mean? That means one gram of water will occupy a volume of one ml. If no number is written, that means it's one. So one gram of water is equal to one ml of water. You can basically expand this time density into this conversion factor. So similarly, density of lead is 11.3 gram per cubic centimeter, that means 11.3 grams of lead is equal to one cubic centimeter of lead. So if nothing is written right here, that means this is one. Okay, so if this is the conversion factor from density of lead. Now let's see how would the question be. The question would be how much does 4.0 cubic centimeter of lead weigh and this conversion factor is or this density of lead is given to you. So write down what's given to you, which is cubic centimeters. The question is how much does it weigh? So the question is asking basically to go from cubic centimeters to grams. Weight is in always grams, milligrams, kilograms. The conversion factor gives you 
grams right here, the density is in grams. So you will use this conversion factor. So I start with what's given, which is 4.0 cubic centimeters. I want to get rid of cubic centimeter. So I divide by cubic centimeter, which is in my conversion factor. See, in this case, I don't have to do this thrice because my conversion factor is already cubic centimeters. Multiplied by the other side, which is grams. So this right here, cubic centimeter is one, grams is 11.3. So cubic centimeter got cancelled. Your final answer would be, I am thinking in this case, it comes out to be 45 grams at the end. Okay. So in this case, what's important? Because this density is given to you in question. This is not a conversion factor. This is density of a particular element that is given to you in question. So this is also regarded as a measured value. Okay. So in this case, even though we are using it as a conversion factor, it is a measured value. So you will look at the number of sig figs for both of these quantities. If density is given to you in question, remember that will be counted towards the number of sig figs. So how many sig figs does 4.0 have? One and two, two sig figs. How many sig figs does this have? We will be counting this. One, two, three, three sig figs. Now the final answer should have less sig figs or two sig figs, that's why it is 45 here. Okay? But you will be counting or considering the number of sig figs from density as well. Right? Let's try one more question. Quickly here. This would be uh, the last question for this video. So let's say what do we have? The question tells me gasoline in an automobile gas tank has mass of 60.0 kg and a density of 0.75 gram per cubic centimeter. What is the volume? What's given to us is mass. So let's write that down. Mass is given to us 60.0 kg and density is given to us, which is 0.752 gram per cubic centimeters. So whenever you see density given to you in question, convert it into a conversion factor. Okay, so I can rewrite this as 0.752 grams of gasoline is equal to one cubic centimeter. Okay, so now the question is, what is the volume? Volume means cubic centimeter is a unit for volume. So the question is asking me to go from kg to cubic centimeters. Do I have a direct conversion to go from kg to centimeter cube in here? I don't. I can go from grams to cubic centimeters. I need to go from kg to cubic centimeters, right? I have a conversion to go for grams and I know that I can go from kg to grams and then from grams I can go to cubic centimeters. The conversion factor for this step is here. The conversion factor for this step we should remember, which is 1 kg is 1000 grams okay and i know this would be more like an open book but you should still try to kind of memorize these okay so now since we have a solution map sort out let's begin with what we have we have kg is 60.0 kg always begin with what's given the starting unit okay i want to cancel kg based on my plan right here this is my plan to go from kg to grams and gram to cubic centimeter. Do not skip a step. Okay. So from kg, I want to cancel kg. So I divide by kg, convert to gram, multiply by gram. 1 kg is 1000 gram. Kg, kg got canceled. My answer is in grams. Now I want to go from grams to cubic centimeter. And this is my conversion factor right here. Okay. I want to cancel gram. So I divide by gram, multiply by cubic centimeter. Right, plug in the number is 1 cubic centimeter is 0 0.752 gram and gram not cancel. Our final answer is in cubic centimeters. So if you solve for this, that would give you your final answer as. So the calculator, if you plug this in, would give you um, 79787. I did not leave enough space again. So let me erase this and rewrite. So that would give you seven nine seven eight seven point two three four 
cubic centimeters okay or even more numbers but how many six six do i want in my final answer again we go with what's given to us in question this is 60.0 so one two three all zeros are significant because it's on right and there's a decimal so that is three six six this right here we don't care about six six but this which is coming from density we do care about okay so how many six six are here we care about this grams that are given to you in question right so this zero is non-significant but one two three so we have three six figs here so our final answer should have three so one two three it has to end right here now how do i do this because the next digit is higher which is okay so how can you write this answer this is greater than five which means the for previous digit has to be uh, rounded up so it would give you seven nine eight which is okay but this was if you read this number this is 79,787.24234 cubic centimeters you cannot round this number to 798 right so all of these at the back will turn into zeros okay and don't put a decimal because as long as if you put a decimal right here all these numbers will become significant it would be five six six so your final answer would be this okay or you could also rewrite this as 7.98 times 10 raised to power c the decimal is right here it's invisible but it's right here so 1 2 3 4 so 10 raised to power it's a big number so my uh, exponent will be positive so 4 cubic centimeters so you could put this as a final answer this has three six figs or you could put this as your final answer but do not put a decimal because if you put a decimal this would become five six figs which is incorrect we want three six figs in our final answer okay and never round the number up or down in a way that your place value changes okay remember this is 79787 so if your final answer is 79800 that's okay but if you put 798 that is not okay imagine i do this to your money and say oh you have 79000 but that's not significant for me it's 798 is significant right if i do that you're not gonna like it so just don't change the numbers in that way okay all right so that's the end of this chapter there are a lot more questions in this powerpoint uh, that you could practice for yourself so please make sure that you go through the whole PowerPoint and practice rest of the questions and email me if you have any questions. Good luck.